Hello guys, welcome to Droid Crunch and in this video we are going to see how you can retrieve the content from an API and how you can escape the web content, you can do iframe the content and it's all going to be done using the Elementor. So if you have that plugin installed then definitely go in and watch the complete video to see in action how you can do that very easily in a couple of seconds. So first of all let me show you the widget that I am using in order to scrape the content from the web so the widget name is called remote content that's from dynamic.oo and you can get that widget in the dynamic.oo plan so make sure you have installed that plugin if you haven't then check out the link in the description and you can get 10% off if you use my coupon called droid crunch and believe me that is a wonderful plugin if you are looking to create great websites you want to get animations you want to make your website more data friendly using acf you want to do sliders google maps you want to do anything like there are a couple of not couple of there are many things that you can do with dynamic.oo let me show you first of all the plugin that we are going to use for this purpose so you can see the features of this plugin are quite insane you can um, make use of this widget for calendars, for content, for creative widgets, for custom fields, for developer purposes. There is a PHP, do short code, all add widgets for developers, and there is a forms extensions that you know enable you to do a lot of things like uh, dynamic redirect, dynamic select field, and all that PDF and all in your forms. So you can make it also conditional. There is a lot in terms of elemental forms with dynamic.oo. You can also create kind of listing website with dynamic.oo and you have maps widgets you have page scroll widgets you have payments from paypal and stripe widgets you have pdfs widgets you have post content widgets you have users dynamic users dynamic post v2 that's now dynamic post and you have ux and ui related widgets svg kind of widgets and you have then video widgets so these are like only categories when you click on them you will find tons of each features and widgets inside of them so you can from here uh, you know expect a lot from this like we offer you over 100 features that extend the power of elementor so it's completely insane so it will never be a bad deal if you buy or opt to buy this plugin and you have 30 days money back guarantee so if you are not happy with the plugin then you can just refund it but it's better to test it out and believe me this will give you a lot more you know uh, control over your website if you are using Elementor. So let's dive in with this tutorial. So for now let's use this remote content widget to uh, fetch the content from the API. So starting with we can uh, use any website for example digital trends okay we have this one out here so what we can do we can uh, by toggling off all of these you can get the complete website inside an iframe like this right that's complete website in an iframe and you have this use google document preview option and set height feature okay you can customize this right away okay that's only for those who want to uh, you know uh, iframe the content from another website but that's very easy you might say but let me just quickly move to another thing that you can do with it so incorporate in the page is a great feature when you click on it all the body content will be by default shown on your web page that you are creating with Elementor and then you have a couple of options like authorization like if you are using an API then that's very useful so you have tokens and all that then you can authorize that using the authorization header and user and password but for now we are not going to use that and there's a connection limit time out limit so you have the maximum time limits in terms of seconds uh, where the server can wait for the response from the target server so it is the maximum time your server will wait for the response right and then you have data is json formatted no it's not in json format so we can keep it to no but we'll we will definitely uh, later on uh, discuss about this when we will be using api okay 
for now let's just scrape the web content and currently we have used body but what we can do we can just uh, head over to the origin website and see what we can scrape from here let's just inspect this out and what we can do we can just here is the b synopsis tag title you can copy this class and paste it right here okay and give it a class selector okay and then we have these three which one binacle locks airlines all these three are here now isn't that amazing and what if you want to get the uh, category as well so you can just uh, choose the class label as well for this gaming and just comma and selector and then the class name and you will get the gaming smart home mobile gaming smart home mobile three of these things as well so all of these have links as well so you can do man html manipulations as well so you can fix the relative links from here and it will enable you to for your remote page contains native links if you, your this page we are talking about is having some native links then you can fix them from this toggle and then you have target blank links option when like these links are uh, will be like in the blank target right open a new page something right and then you have fix lazy images option uh, that will show lazy images without using a specific js so you can also toggle this off or on based on your requirement if you want to fix the lazy images source okay and you all have the complete control like we have only three elements right here so it got thrice of them but what if it is like around 10 plus like 50 and you don't want all of them to appear here then you have this limit elements feature to limit the content we have maximum three so what we can do we can say two okay we can say one okay this way we can do it and then is this option for cache what it does it just uh, is for the performance purpose so if you have enabled this the content that you are fetching from the website will be cached every time so what will happen it will allow you to have you know uh, data backed up so the content that is shown will not take time to appear right and it will be performance ready and you will not have to call every time the target server when you open the page okay and that would be very useful to you know have better performance on the page and this limiting feature is also for the same so the more uh, the less content you retrieve the better it would be for your performance purpose and that's why the feature is there but if there's uh, less content like in terms of uh, loop then you can always uh, keep it to minus one that's for unlimited right but when there's a huge list then definitely you can control that limit that so for example this one so this uh, these are many so what we can do we can just copy this out this class this is from here p meta title okay and let's do this so this is so big and so that's what i was talking about in this case you can use this limit when you keep it to 5 this would be 5 keep it to 10 it would be 10 okay like that so this was for the web scraping purpose okay and now we have another feature for api inside this remote content so what we can do we have some apis public apis that we can use for this purpose um, for example we have this docs api what it does every time you reload uh, this image would be changed okay not this one right you can also click this one so every time you reload the image is changed okay so we are going to use this api right here and what we can do we can tell that the data is in json format why because when you open the api it is actually in the json format right we copied fetch as well so let's recopy it 
okay perfect and then you have to remove this enable the json format and you have this token by default which you can add it so what it does there is a title and accept by default and read mode button that has a link data link but we don't want that we have an image right so what we can do we can just first of all uh, make it more readable okay it's like that okay three elements we have so what we can do we can just remove out this button from here we also deleted this division and okay and we can also remove out this uh, excerpt and in title we can say status success and we also had message right message we can copy this out and just a minute what we have we have message for the image right okay so we need to show an image okay so what we can do we can just uh, come over here and add an image track okay then source and then open here your data source data and then paste it message and then rendered okay and let's close it down so now we have this image and uh, this text that is always success and then we have option to single or archive it so when uh, you have single data your api allows you to have single data then keep it to single otherwise if you are going to retrieve more data like uh, for example uh, instagram post like that then you may, might have archive data in your json format so if it's already in that array then just leave it otherwise you can uh, mention here the path okay and then you can also limit the elements of your archive like there are like 500 posts that you don't want to appear in the one page then you can limit elements like 10 or 20 maybe okay for uh, having better performance eventually and then you can start the array from any index from this uh, button right zero or empty to start from the start okay and then you again have this cache option that is always there okay and let's update this and see how it works yeah and you can reload it like that every time you reload it will change we have something missing and that is i guess it should not be inside of it we can actually make it outside of it right and then we can also remove this one out and this one so this is how you can scrape the data you can use the api and uh, you can also do more with your apis like this generalize uh, io dot io you can use this api as well this having query parameter of name and it's uh, just working based on the value of the parameter itself so for example you can use it in your element or by using uh, two different pages you can name one page for a for your form where you will be inputting the name uh, in a field of text and then you can enter it and have an action uh, of a redirect and use the form id short code okay and then you can uh, put the url of your second page inside of your action of redirect where the you know this remote content widget will be live and on that remote content widget you can use request query parameter and mention this name okay and then you can also 
have in your advanced option like this one you can go right down here query parameter here you can specify the parameter that is name or anything that you want okay and then you can in before mention uh, this one right here like till here you can copy this out and then paste it right here okay and then in settings you will all always get the parameter name and the value so the page dwell will be like this one the complete one okay it would it would come from your query string and then this one is already there and it can work like that so there are seamless possibilities with this widget that you can apply in your web pages using element.o and dynamic.o so this is all for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions feel free to comment that down and you can also subscribe to our channel for watching more videos like this you can suggest us more videos more tutorials and please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you always get a notification when we are going to upload a new video for you and till then bye bye take care stay healthy and have a wonderful day